California's Big Sur coast is the scene of one man's quest to discover the true nature of the echinoderm. John Pierce has been studying echinoderms for more than 40 years. Captivated by their ancient origins and alien beauty, he has spent decades combing tide pools for specimens. For years, he believed that they were simple creatures without the capacity for social lives. It's been thought for a long, long time. In fact, I think from the very beginning of people looking at uh, kind of back to Aristotle, that these animals are hardly animals. How can they have much of a social system if they don't have a brain? Pretty obvious, if they don't have a brain, they can't have much more social activity than a tomato plant. The logic of it seemed unassailable. At least it did, until a few decades ago. That was when John Pierce met a man who revealed to him the secret lives of the slow and spiny. Don Wabber is a man who's followed his dream. He retired early. That was when his real work began. A sculptor, he slices through rock to find his vision. But it is the sea, not the stone, that has laid claim to his heart. When I had a chance to get out of the printing business, I decided my whole rest of my life would be devoted to the water. And it's been ever since a love affair with the ocean. For years, Wabber has spent his days diving and exploring the oceans. He plucks jade from the ocean floor, carving it to reveal the beauty of the form hidden within. But it is not his love of art that inspires his underwater adventures. It is his love of animals that calls him into the deep. Sea stars in particular are his passion. At age 45, he began photographing and studying them in earnest. Wabber became intrigued by the statuesque poses that sea stars would strike. He wondered what their posturing meant and formed a simple and ingenious plan to discover just what the sea stars were doing. I put a NISA camera in the rocks to steady it, I'd pile rocks around it, and then I could leave the camera there. So when I use this time-lapse movie, then all of a sudden you take picture, 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 picture. And when you project it, they go very fast, and I could finally see a sequence. So then I said, my god, this is what they're doing, you know, and this is how they behave. And they look beautiful when they run at the fast speed. Time-lapse photography allowed Wabber to witness the vibrant lives of echinoderms for the first time. He found that they interacted with each other just as other animals do. They just do it in a different time frame. To John Pierce, Wabber's films were a revelation. When I first saw Don's films, I was just stunned. I just could hardly believe my eyes. Here we go. Okay, yeah, now they're, they're going right at it. 
My opinion was turned upside down in the sense of uh, suddenly you have an animals which are interacting with each other. Chasing each other. Actually having complex behaviors. What you really appreciate with these kind of movies is how much action there is. I mean, when Wobber began to analyze uh, their behavior, he was shocked to discover that the sea stars were actually fighting for dominance, just as lions or hyenas do. Not only do they fight for dominance, they do it through ritualized wrestling bouts. Now you'll see some of these where they're, they're really pushing against each other, like wrestling. Yeah. The struggle begins as the sea stars size up their opponents. You'll see animals coming up to each other and raise up their rays and almost like they're looking at each other. And it looks like they're sizing each other up to see who's the biggest or who's in charge. Jockeying for position, the combatants try to get the upper hand. Eventually, they will lock arms, each trying to pin its opponent. Wobber believes that the sea star that manages to come out on top will enjoy a dominant position until the wrestlers meet again. And the one that had the drift right toward the other one retreated. When fights occur over food, he found that the animal first on the prize usually wins. Apparently, even among sea stars, Possession is nine-tenths of the law. One on the food always one. Well, statistically speaking. Perched atop the cliffs of California's Big Sur is a special laboratory where the secret lives of echinoderms are coming to light. Okay, let's put some of these in here now. Here, scientists work with Shape of Life filmmakers to capture the behavior of these little known creatures on film. We'll stick them together and see how long it takes them to spread out. Barely even ask yet, much less uh, starting to look at. One of the things which is really fascinating about echinoderms is they don't seem to go old. You know, you can hardly know what to ask. Uh, they can live forever. Uh, the only thing that kills a sea star is uh, physical or disease, but uh, they don't just grow old. Why not? Uh, they also, some sea stars can regenerate their whole body from one part of the ray. Just take a little ray, cut it off, and the whole thing will grow up. How do they do that? These are animals still shrouded in mystery. How can they help us understand the possibilities of life on Earth? Just put a couple down in front of the lens there, and that sound good. 